My name is Isabel, mm -hmm. and I'm from Chile, and I'm a tourist guide at biketours.com. Excellent, nice. Why do you enjoy it? Because it's so fun. You get to talk about what you learned at your career. You get to talk about the city that you live in. I've, live in, I've lived here for more than 20 years. So I get to show the B side of the city, and it's a city that I know so well, and I really love the city. Well, what I'm interested in as a sociologist is cultural economy and social movements and political movements that go underneath, not what is shown uh, as a facade for the outside, not facade not because it's fake, but because there's much more to see. And that's what I want to show you. It's what a person that lives here has to go through in their everyday lives. Mm -hmm. That has an origin, that's a political origin, an economical origin. That's what I want to show you. Yeah. Being a Chilean, well, it means being in the far end of the continent and of the world. Uh, we are a cultural island. We're surrounded by a desert in the north, by an ocean in the east, um, the Andes in the west. So we've always been very isolated. And now we're opening because of the communications, because of migration and everything. So we're starting to ask that question to ourselves. And I think, well, the answer is that we're not very outspoken like the rest of the Latin Americans. Uh, we have our own sense of humor, we have our own culture, our own food, but we're very generous people. We like our communities and we like our country and we're proud of it. We're starting to be proud of it. So, Chilean economy is growing, we're getting more and more solid. Same with our institutions and our politics. They're, they work. It's fragile mm -hmm. because we depend on raw materials, such as copper, but it's our main uh, product and such as, um, well, a lot of them, uh, agriculture, seafood, we export, we mainly export. So we're dependent on imports and we're dependent on the price of these exports. And besides, we have a very strong finance industrial uh, sector um, and a services sector, for example, tourism. So a lot of Latin America works that way, but we're trying to uh, overcome that, that way of that economy. We're trying to be a more industrialized country and that's the challenge. Uh, our economy I think is distinctive because it's more solid than the rest but it's also very fragile for the things that I've said. My hope is equality. That's the big, big challenge. Not only here but in all of Latin America but as I said in the tour, Chile is one of the most unequal countries in the world. The most unequal country in Latin America for, for sure. So I think the challenge is equality. But it is true that most of the fancy neighborhoods are that way, and most of the not fancy neighborhoods are that way. And you can see in this point that we are very separate Why were they abandoned? Because, well, that's a theory in sociology. <laughs> uh, the, this used to be middle and middle higher class neighborhoods, but when these places became more and more popular, the higher classes started to flee and go up and up to the um, to the Andes. To the uh, thinking about the history of Chile, what, who, who are the heroes and heroines, do you think, mm. that, that people would say now, looking back, yes, they really were the, the people who made the country? There are a lot of them. Uh, most famous ones are Bernardo Higgins, the one that leaded the independence in Chile. Uh, there are more, for example, there was a secret hero called uh, um, Manuel Rodriguez, who was a guy, a military, I mean, he was a lawyer, but he acted as a military and he made uh, his, he disguised, he uses disguises to um, fool the Spaniards, and he was a very charismatic person in history. There are a lot of them, for example, in recent history, there were a few musicians that made a huge political uh, statements, for example, Gabriela Mistral and Violeta Parra, they were political and they were huge and you, you marked Chilean culture. They're, that's also history. And who are the heroes that are alive today, do you think? Alive today? People who are influential, people who are respected. Um, probably the people that were very influential during 2011, these big protests. There are a lot of faces that have been important by one of them, some of them are in the parliament, mostly students, people that used to be students. I think that might sound, this might sound very romantic, but the hero today is the people. The people are demanding changes and that for the first time they're starting to make it. I mean, they're starting to be heard.